Cartoon Network's newest original series, Victor and Valentino, has the awesome distinction of being the first show on the network with a Latino creator behind it. Given the title and the significance this has on the show proper and its premise, I was pretty hyped to learn about it and to see it when it finally came out. Then I realized that that title might have gone to someone else, had the network not sat upon an up-and-coming project forever, and I became a little less excited. You know, I'm still hype, but come on. What's been going on with that project, anyway? Oh, right. To be honest, information on both of these have been uh, kind of scarce in the States since they first appeared, like, years ago, so we're largely left to go off of Cartoon Network's drip feed of information as uh, the months go on. Recently, I found a video that was released on their Latin American YouTube channel, which has a ton of extra information on both of these projects. It's mainly a behind-the-scenes video for Victor and Valentino, but it does feature mention of that other series. I scrubbed through the video over the course of a few nights, and I took a lot of notes to document all the background info that the video gives off. In the video proper, there are five artists that contribute that represent the major components of the show and how it's made. They contribute to most of the questions. Some are really specific and some of them are pretty general, basic questions, really. Since 98% of the information I'm giving is directly generated through me, and my broad Spanish-speaking ability, there's definitely gonna be some stuff that's lost in translation. I know for a fact that they name-dropped Black Hat in there, and I have no idea what it was in reference to. So, that's at least one thing you have to look out for. I would recommend that you look at the video yourself. I'll drop the link below, and um, just watch it to get extra info on the series. I know this series just premiered, it wasn't that long ago, but considering its course, I think it's good to look at the extra information that we have and uh, understand the material better because of it. So, let's begin. So the way that I have these questions organized is by importance. Some of these questions are rather specific to the creation of the show, and some of them are rather, they're just there for fun, basically. Um, but there are 12 of them, and I'll go in chronological order to make it easier in case you want to watch the video yourself. So there will be time codes down below, along with the questions, uh, and you can determine where you want to go from there. The first question is not really a question. So when I said there were 12 questions, it's really like 12 and a half, because the first question asks Diego Milano, the creator, to describe the show. If I had to repeat exactly what they all said, it would be nuts. So it's just easier to repeat what Cartoon Network's official synopsis is. The descriptor that they gave in the official trailer goes as follows. Victor and Valentino embark on hilarious and supernatural adventures as they explore Monte Macabre, a small and mysterious town where the myths and legends of Mesoamerican folklore come to life. That's the most basic summation you can give for this series. I don't know why you would be watching this if you didn't know that the show is coming out, or maybe you're here for that other show. But, yeah, that is the most basic definition. The first real question that came up asked how the creator came up with the premise. Originally, Victor and Valentino was a video game prototype he created in university around 2002, and it was originally called Victor, Valentino, and Vicente. As he grew as a person and as a creator, he realized he wanted his own show. So he took this video game prototype and he reworked it into a cartoon, which is the modern day Victor and Valentino. The next question asks what the writing process for the show would be. Uh, this is a, a fairly generalized question, but Diego himself is very well versed in mythology, for reasons we'll discuss later. Despite that, there was a lot of auxiliary research that he and his main story guy had to do in order to take the myths and legends, condense them into a bite-sized format, and make it uh, fairly appropriate for kids to watch. Some of them are rather horrific or tragic, so 
There are some things they probably had to clean up here and there to make them accessible. The next question asks what the inspiration was for Monty Macabre. Now this this one is rather interesting because there are a few there are a few answers to this question and because it's answered by a few people uh, the details get kind of muddy. Like I said, I have broad Spanish speaking ability, but it's far from perfect. I'm not exactly fluent in it. So there are there are only a few things that I caught. It was inspired by the Mexican capital city, I think. The designers took after scenic festivals, pyramids, pueblos, and mountains to design the landscape. Milano himself cited Buffy the Vampire Slayer as an inspiration. Sunnydale apparently inspired the look and feel of Monte Macabre. And as they reveal, Monte Macabre is in the middle of a lake. It's an island that's split up into four sections with a small square in the middle. And it's all in the middle of one giant lake. I don't know directly what Sunnydale looks like, but um, I think the the design that they came up with was pretty unique, especially for like a Mexican landscape. I think this series takes place in Mexico. It's not explicit, but it, it's implied, isn't it? Next question asks what everyone's favorite character is. Three out of five of them said Victor was the favorite. Diego said Vic was his favorite because Victor was him as a kid. The writer also said Vic was his favorite because he's compelling even as a as a bad kid. Frequently in, in the interview, if you listen to it, you're gonna hear them describe him as a travieso. And a travieso is basically just a troublemaker. And that's 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 how they refer to him. Just just a travieso. He's nothing more, nothing, nothing less. That is all you get. Valentino was a favorite of one person for obvious reasons. He's pretty mature. He's pretty smart. He's pretty skilled. He's the heart of the series, and um, he keeps Vic in line for the most part, even though he gets caught up with the shenanigans every once in a while. Charlene was named a favorite, too, because she's very determined. As we all know by now, she's also very determined to get with Victor. But maybe we'll talk about that more as the show progresses. Next question is more generalized. It asks how the background design process works. This is more of a question that anyone working on an animated series could probably tell you about if they know the pipeline. But the background is determined by how the storyboards and the writing comes out because the storyboards can do a lot of jobs in one it can determine layout it can determine background it can determine what the props look like and the character designs i mean you need those auxiliary elements to create storyboards but the storyboards can also reverse engineer that stuff um, depending on how far along the process is but yeah, after the storyboards are done and the writing is finished and the backgrounds are designed based on the elements that are given by the design team and the creator. So, that th th that's the gist of what was the answer given for that question. Next question asks how the music is composed. Pretty simply, the composer comes in, looks at the tracks, sees where music needs to be inserted, and he inserts it. He collaborates with Diego specifically to see which parts need music and which ones don't. And he works whenever he needs to. He's not on a 9 to 5 schedule or anything, he just comes in wherever he needs to. So, pretty self-explanatory, I reckon. Next question uh, is specific to Diego, and it asks him how I became fascinated with Mesoamerican mythology. This one is a bit nebulous. I, I don't exactly have notes as to how, but this question is answered later on, so we'll get to it. But the only note that I have for this question is that he likes the visual impression that is given off by the mythologies, specifically Aztec mythology and whatever mythologies are represented in various comics. He, he likes those. The next question is 
it's related, but it's it's kind of off topic. It asks Milano if he knows anyone like Chata. Chata is Victor and Valentino's grandmother. She's nice and jovial and comedic on the outside. And of course, she is inspired by his abuela. The next question I assume was asked to kind of relate the show and the artist back to the young audience that's going to watch the show, but it's kind of detached. It asks the team what fan art they made as a kid. Diego made fan art of The Simpsons, Ninja Turtles, and some image comics like Spawn and the Max. One of the other visual artists made a lot of anime-related fan art. Pokemon, Digimon, and Salem Moon. The next question actually relates better to trying to bridge the gap between the artists and the kids watching, because it asks um, what advice they would give to young aspiring artists. And the things that they say are very common pieces of advice given already for especially young animators in training, but they are good pieces of advice to give. So. They basically say, it's hard work, it requires a lot of dedication and passion and practice. You gotta create a lot of characters and a lot of stories over the years in order to get good. And you gotta learn how to read and write. Basic stuff, but uh, it's good stuff. The next question is a juicy one. It's technically not a question. But it, I included it anyway because it is a focal point of this video. It asks Milano in particular what it was like hanging out with Alan Iturio. And if you know that name, then you probably know that he created that other series that we talked about earlier. He said three main things. That he is friends with him. That he and respects and admires him as a friend and an artist and that they are working on a unspecified project together. And he said that he doesn't know how much he can share at that point, but they have a project they're working on together that he can't discuss. Now, this set off a lot of radars for me because we haven't heard a lot about this other series in a while, but we have gotten kind of a soft trailer of sorts from the Latin American branch, which is cool, but we haven't heard anything from Cartoon Network in America. So, Hearing it name dropped in this series that also involves a Latino creator connecting with the two branches uh, is interesting. It leads me to believe that either one of two things is happening. Either, since they are bringing this other series to United States television, let's say, that they're trying to bridge the gap into the main dichotomy of series. So they're using Victor and Valentino as like a bridge to connect this other series to Cartoon Network main. You know, this this other series seems to be like framed around one of the main characters kind of roasting other series. So if, if Victor and Valentino had like a crossover, if it was the subject of one of these episodes, these perspective episodes, and it would serve to be like a good introduction to the, to the audience that Cartoon Network normally has in the States. The other thing could just be they're working on something totally unrelated, and I sound like a dingus for even bringing this up, but it, it was interesting that they brought this up in general in this unrelated interview about this other show. So it leads me to believe that there is a connection to it because they brought it up at this time, at this place, in this interview. So that's something to speculate on for sure. And um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting on the offset. This was actually foreshadowed on Twitter like six months ago. Uh, the two documented their, their journey so long ago, like I think it was around October where they tweeted about them being in California, hanging out together, visiting the magical wall, and talking about stuff. So this might be related to that as well. We have no idea at this point, but it's, it's interesting to hear it being brought up. The last question asks what the major source of inspiration for Victor and Valentino was, and Pretty much everybody in the video answers because there are a lot of ways that a series can be inspired, either musically or visually or philosophically. So there are a few points that they hit on. 
Comedically, Milano's family serves as a major source of inspiration for the series. He literally called out his mom as like a Latina Lucille Ball, and I had to laugh. His grandfather used to tell him a bunch of stories of mystics and spirits and telepaths and extraterrestrials and other mysteries. And there are also some that were based off of archaeology, I guess. So that also fed into like his obsession with mythological stories and tales. Musically, the composer is inspired mainly by the works of Hans Zimmer and John Williams, and he wanted to channel like a really emotional and cinematic feel through Victor and Valentino in pre-American and mariachi music. Diego in particular is a fan of all types of mythology, so the other cultural mythologies like the Greek, the Roman, the Scandinavian, Egyptian, all serve as inspirations for the series, but it's like a soft inspiration, because it's not, it's not like the focal point of the series. It's the Mesoamerican myths. That stuff is the, the focal point. I assume like maybe the character dynamics of some of the stories are inspired by the other myths as well. So those are the main 12 and a half questions that were answered during the course of this video. I found it interesting and I really wanted to talk about it because the show just premiered and I feel like half of the series is already out there whether through the app or on TV itself but we don't have much background on it so I, I wanted to present these findings because it's really interesting. Like I said, I would implore you to check out the original video because I gave a lot of background info. The scope of my knowledge is limited. There's definitely some stuff that might be mistranslated. So any way we can refine all this info uh, would be even better. So that's down below. Timestamps of all these questions are down below. And uh, you can check out the video for yourself and uh, see what else there is to offer in the, the behind the scenes video. Go watch Victor and Valentino. It's pretty good so far. They're just living up to the, the mission, the purpose of the show. And uh, it only has to get better over time. So yeah, that's the gist of it. Also, this show is not Mexican Gravity Falls. It's time to stop. It's been 2000 years, like it's time to stop.